welcome to How to Wednesday. Today I'll show you how to configure your KiloView E2 encoder to get that NDI feed. So before I start, uh, I have I want to take you through what I have on my desk. I have the KiloView E2 NDI unit right here, an Ethernet switch, an 8-port TP-Link Ethernet switch, and its power adapter right there. I have a laptop. This is where we'll configure uh, the web browser interface for the KiloView E2 encoder, and a camera for our source and uh, not forgetting my accessories right here. Let me just show you what's in the box. So I have the <laughs> we have the technical support, we have a warranty card and uh, a quick start guide. If it's your first time to use the unit, then all information you will need to start you off is written in this uh, user user guide this quick start user guide and now the unit itself the KiloView e2 unit comes in two models there's a hdmi one and there's a, an sdi one so the unit i'm going to use today is a hdmi encoder so depending on the systems you have you can go for the hdmi or sdi one i'll just get this power adapter out as well and this is a silica gel. This absorbs moisture inside this packaging. So don't eat that and don't keep it near kids. You will regret it. <laughs> yes, so I have everything out in the open. So let's just start connecting these things. But yes, before we start the connections, I'll just take you quickly through the physical connections of this uh, encoder. This is the E2 unit, HDMI one. We have several ports. We have the power uh, connector here, and a USB, mini USB port. We have a HDMI input and a loop out, and audio in and out. So why do we have the audio in and out? This is just in case you, have, you want your video coming in separately from your audio, as in you don't want your audio embedded with the video signal on the HDMI cable, then you can have your audio coming in separately via the an eighth jackpots right here on the audio input and have an out as well we have an ethernet port right there then we have these three lights these three tally lights the information about these lights is on top of the unit the first one is for power the next signal and then run so when we have this unit connected and powered we'll be able to see these lights coming on and the indicated uh, color that will be there then we, it's very nice ventilated, this side and this side. So I don't think this unit can heat up because of this good ventilation. So actually, I can see through the unit and uh, an on-off switch. And also, because with this encoder, you can stream directly to RTSP, to the internet, to any platform using RTMP or RT, RTSP. So you can also do recording from the unit itself. And... I guess that's it. So I'll just go directly to the connections. I'll start with connecting the power cable to the E2 encoder. I'm connecting this cable to the unit, but I'm not going to connect it to the power source. So I'll just leave it hanging there first. This is for when I'm done with all my connections. Uh, the second one I'll do is my network switch not going to power it as well until I'm done with all my connections. Yeah, let me just have this organized here nicely. This is a HDMI cable. I'll have it from our camera to the E2 HDMI in. There we go. And now the Ethernet. First cable will go to the laptop. We'll go from the laptop to the switch. You can either use a switch or bypass the switch if you, if you only have one unit. And all you want to do is configure, uh, go through the configurations. But the switch is always recommendable when you have more than one unit. And also you want to access it to access it on your network so with the switch you are able to connect multiple units and have multiple uh, destinations 
for the same source. So yes, I have that. Oh God, what is happening to my cable? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. So I'll have this connected to the ethernet port of the encoder. And then I'll connect these ones to my power extension right here. So, yes, I have everything connected to power, but my unit is not on yet. I have to manually do that. So this is the on switch. I'll just slide it to my right. <laughs> and there we go. From these indications, you can see that my unit has already received light and it's running. And also the Ethernet port is on. So the only thing that's remaining is our signal. We have the HDMI connected to the camera, but my camera is not on. So I have to put on my camera first. And then we'll just see that green light. Yes, there we go. So I already have a feed coming into my unit because of this uh, solid green light on the signal uh, indicator. Yes, I think I have everything already connected. So I'll just go to the laptop and show you uh, how to, to go to the web user interface. Before we do that, um, in our previous videos, we've talked about configuring your laptop to be on the same network as the unit you're working on. I had already configured my laptop, but I'll just run through uh, very fast to make sure that it's on the same network and uh, I did not mess that up. How do I know if my IP address, how do I know if the PC is configured to the same network as my unit? I need to check the IP address of the unit. I told you this document is very important. So this is where you find that information, including the default IP address of the E2 encoder. The default IP address is 192.168.1.168 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0. So we already see that it's dot one range. I just have to confirm that my laptop is on the same network as that. And uh, yes, my laptop is dot one dot ten, so we are on the same network, and my subnet as well is on the same network as my unit. The next thing I'll do is let me just close this first and open a new window. Okay, so whatever browser you're using, uh, you can just go and type the IP address of the unit on the browser. So I'm going to use Chrome. Sorry, just open two windows. I'll close one. And then I type the IP address that I read for you earlier, which is 192.168.1.168. There we go. And there we go. And uh, also the default username and password for this unit is admin admin with lowercase. I already have that typed in, so I'll just click sign in and we have the web interface for our unit right here. You can see that we have much more configurations uh, inside the, the web browser interface than on the physical uh, unit. On the physical unit, it's just the ports, but if you want to do all these configurations, you have to get into this uh, interface. And because for today, we just wanted to show you how to get, how to configure this uh, HDMI to be encoded to NDI so that it's available on your network to be picked by any NDI system. We'll go to the NDI tab, then NDI settings. This is NDI HX version. We have NDI and NDI HX. Uh, so with NDI HX, we have version one and NDI, NDI HX two. Uh, I'll just use the NDI HX one. You can change the device name and the channel name, which uh, I I probably don't want to change right now. I just want the unit to remain on its default uh, names. So I have that already configured. Actually, it, it is just a plug and play thing because that configuration was already there. Okay. So this is my NDI Studio Monitor. Let me close it and put it on again so that you can see how that selection is made. NDI Studio Monitor is a free tool. NewTek have uh, free tools for Windows and Mac PCs. 
whereby you can download and test your NDI feeds. So NDI Studio Monitor is one of the free tools that you can use to monitor all the NDI sources on your network. When I click uh, there, I'll just see that I have only my E2 NDI feed on the network. If I had several, then we'll have a list of them going down. But I have only the E2 NDI and the channel name is right there, so it's already selected. We already have that feed. I think it's just because whatever my camera is, forcing, is focusing on is not as bright. But there we go. The latency is very small. Yeah. What are you waiting for to go to, to start having NDI workflows when you have such systems? You have a, a HDMI camera, you can go uh, you can go NDA with the KiloView encoder. And uh, we have several of them on our website, which is, <laughs> sorry guys, it's a little bit hot in here. So I just got a little bit confused. But anyway, for this unit and many more other units uh, for KiloView, you can go to our website, which is www.highwayav.co.ke. And as well, if you want to learn more about these configurations you can come to our office in south b at trans towers upper ground office number six and we'll be able to take you through the kiloview encoder and any other products that we have with us in our office so until next time guys with uh, another new product i'll be here waiting for you cheers and stay safe bye bye